A very good afternoon to our viewers. I'm Shilpa Ratnam and you are watching CNN News 18. Now we have some breaking news coming in about the mega terror crackdown. CNN News 18's exclusive inside info of the raids against pro-ISIS cadres. Raids have been conducted against pro-ISIS cadres in seven states just this morning by joint teams of NIA and the respective state police. The interrogation and forensic examination of seized digital media is underway. Initial revelations indicated that some of them were actively involved in content creation as well as propagation of India-centric magazine Voice of Hind. This is an ISIS magazine. It's an India-centric one and we're all now joined by a managing editor, Anand Narsimhan, with more details. Good afternoon to you, Anand. We're still following that story that started yesterday. It's that mega terror crackdown, this time on those with ISIS allegiances. And now we're finding out that there have been raids in seven states just this morning. Good afternoon, and yes, uh, this is again further in, in further uh, further crackdown or uh, uh, you know further information on the investigation and this mega crackdown pan in there which is being conducted. Yesterday it was 25 individuals on Saturday that were uh, uh, arrested or nabbed across 10 different states of the country. Today it is about seven individuals uh, spanning seven states, multiple individuals which have been uh, who have now been uh, arrested. But uh, more importantly, they are all people who are uh, actively contributing to literature, vitriolic literature, uh, radical literature, which is doing the rounds on social media. A lot of times the agencies were wondering where this literature was coming because it was very, very India-centric and India-oriented. Uh, even though the literature was using the platform VOH, which is an ISIS platform for this region. Now, uh, they have realized that there are a lot of these active contributors were locals or uh, they were based in India and from where they were churning out this vitriol or this radical uh, uh, literature. And uh, more importantly, they had active, uh, very clear ISIS leanings and uh, they were uh, doing it because if they had access to this mouthpiece and they were able to contribute to it, uh, clearly they were actively involved and engaged with the IS cadre. Now they're uh, sitting outside this country. So th this uh, is an extension of the crackdown, which is a pan-India crackdown at the Central Intelligence Agency is now stumbling upon uh, a lot of the literature being churned out from India because uh, this was quite baffling and we had put this out about uh, four months ago, sometime in uh, January or February itself, that uh, a lot of the literature, uh, pan-India, which was coming through, uh, was uh, 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 and which was being pushed uh, on these platforms, be it Al-Qaeda or be it ISIS uh, magazines or voices uh, or uh, mouthpieces, were slowly turned, becoming very, very India-oriented. There, there, were a, there was a crackdown which happened on the Daesh Khorasan module and uh, the Khorasani turned out to be an active uh, uh, two or three individuals who were operating out of uh, Srinagar. That was also a recent uh, investigation and a crackdown. Uh, so far, intelligence agencies were wondering whether were, were of the uh, impression that this literature was being written outside our soil, but it was being pushed via social media and drafted. But now this uh, brings in the nature of radicalism and, uh, and and how close it is. It's not just at our doorstep. There are Trojans who are now well-fitted within our territory. Now we'll have to see the antecedents of these individuals, whether these individuals truly are Indian nationals or are they illegals who have been residing in India with fake Indian documents uh, and uh, where have they come from and their origins. And that will also show a particular pattern which will further raise concerns about uh, what is being allowed in our country, the number of illegals who are floating around in our country, uh, passing around fake documents and uh, the organizations that they are being affiliated to. So this is also a subject matter of investigation. Well, yes, indeed, Anand, staying on that point that you raised about literature being used to influence individuals, uh, the voice of Hind aims to actively recruit Indian Muslims by harnessing those fears and grievances due to the political developments and trying to tap into perhaps already uh, people when they're feeling disgruntled by using uh, that uh, to kind of, uh, uh, invite them into the fold and uh, this is being done across multiple languages and that is a propaganda that now the NIA plans to counter. Because then what happens is the um, Al-Qaeda was issuing, uh, uh, floating their literature in Bangla, printing it in Bangla. ISIS literature has now moved away just from uh, Arabic or, uh, or, or Urdu to, to Hindi, and it was also now being floated in some of the other regional languages, including some South Indian languages. So where was this being printed or published, and uh, who was it who were involved? Because these elements clearly had some local influence and local help. 
Now, this is what they have now cracked down, that uh, there are raids which are now happening against pro ISIS cadres, which have been conducted in seven states. Uh, we don't exactly know how many people have been uh, nabbed today, but there were 25 who were nabbed yesterday. Uh, those numbers will only go up uh, in, the, in this continuance of the crackdown by the Central Intelligence Agency, that is the uh, uh, and and, uh, and in, co in the in coordination with the NIA and state police. So clearly, Central Intelligence, which is uh, uh, providing all the information, and then you have the crackdown teams or the enforcers uh, within units of NIA, along with the local uh, state police task forces, who are uh, conducting these raids and the crackdown. So. We have uh, we we are expecting another briefing by the cops over uh, the entire nature of the raids and what kind of literature and how many people are radicals. But uh, we we should all be very curious to see who out of these, how many out of these individuals have dubious documents, who have dubious antecedents in terms of their origin as far as nationality is also concerned, because uh, this could be a uh, this could be one of the biggest issues uh, that we are facing as a country. Uh, estimates suggest that we have at least four crore illegal living on our soil without, uh, you know, absolute validation and with fake documents or they have to sneak themselves and smuggle themselves into, this, into our country. Out of these four crore, uh, how many are those who are highly radical and uh, who have a connection with radical outfits? And what is it that they are trying to perpetrate? Because most, most of these groups uh, and WhatsApp groups and social media groups have had at least 180 to 200 members. And there are uh, hundreds of such WhatsApp groups but they seem to have certain common administrators and, and they are all pointing towards uh, a, a hub and spoke kind of a module where on the face of it, it looks like these are all in their entities which are acting of individually of their own volition, but they seem to be connected or linked with each other uh, uh, somehow. And that's this entire web that now needs to be unearthed and how deep the rot runs is something that uh, the agencies are now finding out. Thank you very much, Anand. Appreciate your time. Yes, indeed, the rot runs deep and a pattern emerging very soon. But for now, let's take a look at what's taking place.